to Gorillas. The motorbike gave up on this steep and bumpy road. That's a clear morning. Volcanoes are out. Gorillas are waiting. So in the end, was it worth it for you? Every cent. with Gerard um, from the home of Kigesi. Gerard, can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, it's a, it's a museum of living culture and natural history. So it's one of the places people must visit. An Yay. eco umbrella! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to carry a bale of hay on your head to have the so same cool. result. So cool. I found something else here. Some mode of transport. If you don't have a road, but for people that have nothing better to do on the same height, you can sit in this basket and people put that on their head and start walking. Imagine having a garden where you can plant your coffee. Not bad, huh? So this plant here is stevia and the leaves are extremely sweet. I just have one between my teeth. Mm. So what was your motivation to set up this project? Way back in my school time when, when I went to the capital of Uganda just to study. And then I, when I come back, then I realized that everything is dying out. The culture, the environment, of course coupled with poverty. So I had to figure out something that I could do back in my home. <clears throat> but the starting point to, to restore my culture, like bring it back and then also do something for the environment and the community. What kind of challenges does rural Uganda face today? Uh, I think the biggest challenges uh, people are facing is uh, <clears throat> adapting to the changing climate. That in a way affects their economic activities. Mm. The young population, they are not so much skilled to be able to provide uh, a service. So unemployment is the big challenge. So solutions? Yeah, so like for me, I do travel business and uh, it gives back to uh, projects like uh, equipping people with the skills, uh, food forest skills so they can feed their families and make extra income. And also like the museum helps people to uh, just resonate way back to their culture and then also they can be able to do something. But um, the solution is skilling. So like you've seen yesterday, we, we, we have created a, a skilling academy. It's a creative academy. We believe it is going to empower young people with skills so they can be able to uh, do something back in their communities and then also they can uh, like uh, improve their standards of living. Fair play to you. Great projects. The best of luck. Thank you. We had a lovely stay in the house. House. One of those places that are harder to leave just because sit there, lean back, and feel at home. Not 
so much difference to Rwanda. The hills are still patchwork quilts of fields. And the kids have nothing better to do than running after our bicycles. <laughs> Not too bad in yourself. How are you? Give me your money. No. <laughs> well, at least she didn't presume that I have her money. <laughs> Approaching engineering highlight of Uganda, what was described as the tightest hairpin bend in the country. And some guy on Google Maps mentioned that you have to be in control of your vehicle to navigate it. I can just imagine that lad figured out where the horn was, but not what to do with the steering wheel. It's definitely doable with the bicycle handlebar and the truck doesn't seem to have a problem with it either. But of course, if you can make it sound like an adventure, do so. Are you looking for a banana? Huh? Are the trucks giving you things? Karina is very happy that we can camp here by the lake of because course. beyond it is 32 kilometers so she still has power left in her lungs to blow up her map. <laughs> the head is getting redder. <laughs> Blends in with the jacket. <laughs> And the nose. <laughs> God. <laughs> well, we woke up to fog this morning. Just beginning to lift, the sun is breaking through. And it was actually warm last night with a lot of condensation in the center. Hi! Are you making bricks? Oh cool! Okay. And how long does it take to dry? To dry like uh, five days. Five days? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Matthew, how much do you charge for a brick? A brick it is 150. And 50. And how many bricks do you need to build a house? It is about uh, 5,000. 5,000? 5, yes. Oh, so you're a rich man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Another brick maker. This is the business run here. Look at this.
Oh, that's the Dutch group we met a few days ago offering us water <laughs> after hearing our stories about Namibia. Do you think we should go that way? Queen Elizabeth, how would you go to Queen Elizabeth? That is no road, no distance. But not today. Two or three days. Like, like, like four days. 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 How would you go to the middle of this way or that way? That way. Why? Right, we're going this way. Thank you very much. We're going the long way. Have a good day. Thank you very much. You know, our first idea was to go on the other road according to Kamut. But yesterday some locals told us this would be a whole lot better, better condition. And we actually met some cyclists who had come down here and they said the road was good, at least not washed out. So this is probably the scenic route. <laughs> They're trying their hand at Chinese too, huh? Welcome to Guinea Penetral National Park. Oh, thank you. Here you can see the start of the impenetrable national park, the Bavindi. So, the place of darkness because of the thick undergrowth. It's also impenetrable. Oh, we've got a road going through, it should be okay for us. But yeah, it's on the UNESCO World Heritage List. And this is our road. This is steep, like nine percent now. The stretch. Oof. I didn't have any lunch. So I've had to make do with a few peanuts, a few bickies. I can feel it now. Now we have been told there are elephants here. That's the first sign of elephant dung. Well, there's no question about it. That's where the elephant went in or came out of the bushes. You can see his tracks very clearly. So we've been assured they won't be around during the day. Court, I'd say, was very happy to hear that. Oh, there's quite a lot of elephant tracks here. Where's that Coca-Cola stand? Hidden in plain sight. Extra sugar, beat day. <laughs> oh, I'll have a Rolex now, thank you.
Chomsky. After a road, it was more like stairs to the tarmac. Hey. I like your bike. Look at you. So cool. The antenna is always good. Usually marks the top of the hill. Court is on high alert here. He has seen elephant dung and I don't think he's ready for another adrenaline kick so soon again. <laughs> but you know what? Coming down from the tropical rainforest through the tea plantations into Savannah in just a couple of days, it does make Uganda quite an attractive tourist destination that you can have so many different climate zones and vegetation in such a short space. It's quite amazing. Yeah, it looks like. So is it a lioness? Ah, you know, the front, you see? The front is more defined and it's a pretty print. So that's a lion yeah. as opposed to a lioness. Yeah. Do you see what we know? Do you see what we've learned in Zambia? Thank you, Noah. <laughs> Thank you, Noah. Well, as long as they're not out on the road, they're lying under a tree. Oh, these are the tree climbing lions. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we should be looking up in the trees. But I'm doing the whole morning already. Ah, oh, I forgot about that. That's one the ones overhanging the road. <laughs> So we should be able to see the elephants from a distance here. Oh, the elephants were here too. So the lion tracks are still there. Dun -dun -dun -dun. It's pleasant cycling out here. The road's a bit bumpy. But even if we see no animals, the scenery is beautiful. just figured out another reason why I'm enjoying this so much. There are no sexy flies! Uganda, you're getting serious thumbs up from me here. came to Africa, this is how I imagined it to be. Savannah, with these camel palm trees, open spaces, dirt tracks, maybe not as green as it is now after rainy season, but this was the image I heard about. As proud as punch.
So Bruce, tell us, you're a fisherman here, how do you know when you're entering Congolese water? If you find you are riding a, um, a 15 uh, horsepower, within an hour, you've concluded the Ugandan side. Okay. Now you've entered the other side. Okay. Second, we meet uh, the other Congolese people. And third, you lose the Ugandan network on phone. You start receiving some messages from the DRC that right. welcome, this is the DRC. Right. So when is the best time to go fishing? I can say there are two seasons here. Especially every rainy season. Every rainy season here we receive a lot of fish. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck with your business. Okay, thank you. told that every Wednesday the village gets cleaned up. Without that, most of that plastic lying around has been here for many a Wednesday. The amount of butterflies around here is unbelievable. Really like a flying carpet. Look here. Ooh. <laughs> and elephant tracks going into the bush left and right is phenomenal. Yeah, African massage again, huh? I guess the steamroller took a coffee break every five centimeters. You should be able to see elephants for miles around, but there's not one talking about seeing elephants for miles around. There's a family. All you see on the 360 is probably a few black spots. There's another two alleys. Another two alleys there. At a safe distance. You can stay there. Did you see him? There was an elephant about a hundred meters from the road. And I just looked back behind the bush and he had the arse towards me. So I thought it was safe. <laughs> Jesus. That was a bit close to the road now. <laughs> Follow that woman. She knows where she's going. <laughs> okay. So we're out looking for chimpanzees this morning. We've been walking for about 45 minutes, turned around, they weren't where our guides thought they would be. But you see, we're, in, we're well protected. He's got a loaded rifle. Be a bit of a Blair Witch pool check here. Are we be going ape? <laughs> it's all happening. Is this how they sleep with one foot in the air? Them. If 
was a little bit high without, but even better with. Welcome back in, in the houses of the humans. <laughs> ah, she's a natural. <laughs> ah, let me do some grooming. <laughs> what an excursion, huh? That was very exciting. So Ramadan, you have some really cool project in the village, I just saw. Tell <laughs> us about you. it. Thank you, thank you. I teach at a primary school in Katunguru. Actually, I, I had a chance of visiting the United Kingdom in 2013. I also visited Rwanda and I saw how neat it was and how they were managing plastic. I thought very important that we could also practice something like that. You know, you look at our Katunguru, we don't have trees. Actually, trees is a very big problem. And so we kept planting trees, planting trees, and they were all eaten up or destroyed or what? By gods, uh, by wild animals, but also wild people. <laughs> <laughs> Until we decided to, 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 to make those plastic shelters. So we do those shelters, plant some seedlings, and then put a shelter around mm -hmm. that tree. Mm -hmm. And then we have seen some trees growing. Well, so, congratulations. Thank you very well much. Done. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. And continued success. Oh, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Just about to leave Songbird Safaris, and we've been um, penned in with these elephants all morning. <laughs> So, Southwest Uganda was a hell of a ride, eh, Court? Definitely one of our highlights in Africa so far. Yeah, if you think about it, we had gorillas, we had chimpanzees. We had three national parks with tea plantations, volcanoes. All on quiet roads with exceptionally friendly and hospitable people. And you know what? That was only the start. There's a second installment for Uganda in the pipeline dealing with Lake Victoria, Source of the Nile, few boat rides, Mount Elgon. So, if you haven't already, subscribe now. And like us and love us and everything else you <laughs> might want to do. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>